I will be talking about initiating anticoagulants since we lack uh, randomized data. Uh, most of the trials, all of the trials that have proven the, the, the efficacy of anticoagulation in preventing stroke recurrency uh, either excluded the patients with moderate or severe stroke or included them months after the index event. So we lack data from randomized trials uh, on the subacute phase of stroke. We also know that uh, the first days after stroke are the most cru crucial and they carry the most risk of recurrent stroke. So it is plausible to ask ourselves if we go and start anticoagulation earlier in order to reduce these events. We also know that the first month after stroke in these patients, patients with cardioembolic stroke, there is a non-negligible risk of uh, intracranial hemorrhage, late hemorrhage transformation. So this should be done safely. So all the controversy is about the optimal time that is both safe and efficient to start anticoagulants. Now we have data from uh, observational studies. We have data from uh, the RAF NOAC uh, registries. We know uh, that uh, there are different types of anticoagulation, of course, and we have different type of data for each of the, of the molecules used. For example, we know the results of the Mr. Clean Med trial that used very early anticoagulation. In fact, they have started anticoagulating patients during endovascular treatment with heparin and continued that for some hours after endovascular treatment. And as you may well know, this trial was halted since the treatment group with high heparin and aspirin uh, had greater uh, risk of hemorrhagic transformation. So we also know from uh, for NOACs that it's correlated when they start with a rough NOAC study that when we start them the first two days after stroke, they might be a bleeding risk. And uh, we have seen the publication of a couple of randomized controlled trials. One such trial is the triple axel uh, study that uh, has uh, tested uh, rivaroxaban and vitamin K antagonists uh, in the first five days after stroke. This is a stroke group, not specifically targeted and endovascular treatment patients. Since for these patients, we even have less data. Well, the triple XL study showed that it's quite safe to start earlier, but this study excluded severe strokes. When we are talking about endovascular treatment patients, there are patients with more severe strokes, with larger infarcts. So these are the patients that are both prone to bleeding and also more susceptible to have recurrent stroke. Now, specifically for endovascular treatment, in the timing study, which was a, a Swedish uh, randomized control, uh, non-inferiority study, uh, registry-based, there was a uh, 14% of patients uh, having EVT, but specifically for them, we have some observational data coming for a subgroup uh, Japanese cohort study, the relaxed study, that has shown also that it might be safe, it might also be more efficient to start earlier. Now, for the group that we have, the least available data is the, uh, the patients that have early hemorrhagic transformation. So they have some kind of bleeding in the first 24 hours after stroke. For these patients, we only have a couple of observational studies coming, one from China and the other from uh, Japan, the, that show that we can start earlier, but uh, in the first four days, the Japanese study uh, raised the red flag that uh, showed that there may, might be an excess risk of bleeding. It is of importance that we will see uh, to, uh, tomorrow, uh, during the first day of the ESOC Congress, the results of the ELAN trial, which is a, a randomized controlled trial of um, early anticoagulation initiation. It, con uh, it concerns all stroke patients, and it has used the approach of um, clinical neuroimaging. Uh, so you might uh, uh, decide when to start anticoagulants based, based solely on clinical grounds, so NHSS, stroke severity. This is the approach used by the American guidelines and the guidelines issued by the European Society of Cardiology. Or you might use a combined approach of clinical and neuroimaging data, which is the approach used by the European Stroke Organization guidelines. 
ELAN trial has used this approach to randomize patients, and it would be of great interest to see their results. There are some things we are, so, we are certain about, or we are almost certain. Um, full dose heparin uh, during endovascular treatment carries an increased stro uh, risk of bleeding. It's still been used for, uh, especially for stent deployment in the context of intracranial atherosclerotic disease. So the fact that it's still being used means that it's necessary sometimes. The dose is important, so we should probably go as low as achievable or reasonable for uh, heparin in the acute phase. The other thing that we know is that um, uh, NOACs are uh, more safe and efficient in the subacute phase after so, and we have performed our study group a systematic review and meta-analysis showing that, uh, that uh, NOACs uh, carry less bleeding risk and also are most uh, uh, more efficient. Bridging is no longer an option. So bridging, to remind you, is giving full dose heparin before starting oral anticoagulation. We have multiple data from the IAC studies and other studies also showing that bridging is deleterious. So you don't need bridging. You go straight ahead with NOAX in the subacute phase. Now, the exact time is related, of course, to the severity of the effort to uh, the, the extensity of the effect and whether you have an hemorrhagic uh, transformation or not. So for patients with my, minor infarcts, you may start in the first days. For more severe infarcts within the first week. For parenchymal hemorrhage, you should probably wait for the second week. But the final conclusion is that within two weeks after stroke, most patients should receive anticoagulation. I mean, all data converge towards the fact that most patients should be treated within two weeks because it is quite safe. No acts are safe as far as intracranial hemorrhage is concerned, and we reduce the risk of recurrences.